All right, it's time to look into what's trending in employment law. Lawyer, you're on the clock. All right, so we've got a few topics I want to cover for Lawyer on the Clock today. The first is uh, strikes. And as everyone knows that the uh, United Auto Workers are striking the big three auto manufacturers, seeking a huge, huge increase in their contract. Um, and uh, it, General Motors came out yesterday and said that the historic strike by the UAW has already cost them $200 million in the first two weeks. And that prompted the company to secure a $6 billion line of credit to shore up liquidity. Uh, and that, I think, demonstrates uh, that the GM is really buckling in for a prolonged work stoppage. We all know here in Missouri that the union on September 15th walked out of a Missouri plant. And uh, that's just one of the many plants around the country that uh, is being uh, struck by the United Auto Workers. Uh, the, the UAW president, Sean Fain, plans to update the union's 150,000 members at Ford, GM, and, and Stellantis, which is Chrysler, uh, on Friday of this week uh, about the status of the strike. Uh, very importantly, I want to share with uh, the union uh, said on Monday it presented a new contract offer to GM. GM in turn said despite the offer, significant gaps remain and GM has been forced to lay off 2,100 workers at five plants in four states as a result of the strike. Ford mm -hmm. said Wednesday it was laying off an additional 400 workers in Michigan starting today because of the strike after previously laying off 930 workers and Stellantis has laid off 370 workers in Ohio and Atlanta because of the strike. Unfortunately, this has a huge ripple effect because that means nearly 30% of auto parts makers surveyed by an industry trade group said they have had to lay off some workers due to the UAW strikes. And another 60% expect more layoffs by mid-October if the walkouts continue. So uh, it's going to have a, just a huge ripple effect on a very fragile economy that we're dealing with already. So that'll lead us into one of the other topics I want to chat about today, Phil, which is uh, which, which is um, uh, a, a topic, a, a, an article I read from a uh, publication called The Business Insider. And the title of the uh, article was The Boss is Back in Charge. And I know you and I've chatted as we prepped for the program today, and you and I may not totally see eye to eye on the premise of the article, but I would encourage people to take a look at the article. And again, it's uh, called, called The Boss is Back in Charge. And it basically, the premise is, is that between the rise of job-threatening AI, strict to uh, return to office mandates, and sweeping layoffs, it feels like bosses are clawing back what little remains of employees' power that came uh, from the, the uh, COVID pandemic. Yeah. So that's kind of the general premise. Slightly of the different. Slightly I did read that article, and I mean, there are things I, I can agree with within the article. The issue for me was, you know, we, we have an increasing job vacancy rate, and we're still at like 9.6 million through the end of August job openings um, that we're having a hard time filling. And, you know, if you took that back to the early part of this year where it was 10 and a half you know, we really haven't changed or made an impact with our sweeping layoffs that we talk about. And then the other part of that with AI, and it'd be interesting to see our poll results, maybe get Ryan's opinion on this um, here in just a minute, is most people I'm talking to, and maybe it's, maybe it's Midwest versus the coast, I don't know, but they're not using AI um, in, in any way, let alone in any routine, productive, strategic way um, from, from that yeah. standpoint. So those two pieces are where I, I just kind of get a little sideways with the article. Um, yeah, so what let I me with is the gap of talent. Yeah, that's and that's what you and I chatted chatted about before the program. And I think that uh, you know it's really interesting. I think the article did recognize, uh, especially toward the end, that AI really has not cost people that many jobs right now. People are still trying to figure out how to properly use AI within the workplace. But what that's led to is, is that some companies are not hiring because they're trying to evaluate 
whether AI can, in fact, replace some employees. And so it's kind of caused a little bit of a, a pause there. Now, you are correct on the statistics about the number of jobs that are available out there. It hasn't come down that much from earlier in the year. But as you remember, uh, you and I had some discussions, and one of the things that, that, that is significant, you need to parse out those numbers, is that where the jobs are does not necessarily match where the job seekers are right now. You have a lot of people in the tech industry who have been laid off, uh, mass layoffs, and those, are, those folks aren't going to go take those jobs at the fast food restaurants and the restaurant and retail industry. They're, the economy's really out of whack right now, or the job market's really out of whack with where the jobs are. And so okay. while there are a tremendous- Point of skill, yeah. that's a, a bigger issue than both issues discussed in the article. And the skill gap wasn't really addressed in, in my opinion, but that, yeah. That's correct. I, I, I do want to point out, I think that- uh, that, that there were some really interesting uh, uh, or, or surveys that they uh, mentioned in the, in the article here. And they, the, uh, they, they did a survey of uh, 628 job switchers uh, in June. And a quarter of those in that survey regret, regretted quitting their last roles. And 42% said their new jobs have not lived up to their expectations. And I think uh, they, they quoted an MIT professor who said that, quote, I think we were at a period of tight labor markets and a growing recognition of workers desire to stay, have a say in how they work. But then she warned that a narrative was being driven by a few big companies and it was a little too early to say how much uh, that has shifted. So yeah. I think what they're saying is returning, return to office mandates are getting tougher despite employees pushing back. Uh, that charge really has been led by big tech and banks with various degrees of severity and pushback. So I just think that, uh, that, that it's a really interesting article and it'll kind, kind of help segue, segue us into our discussion with Ryan as it relates to the AI. And then uh, one, one other one, Phil, real quickly, that I, I, I do wanna mention here, uh, there's also uh, a survey that was released yesterday by Gallup, the, uh, the, the polling company. And Gallup uh, put out a really, really interesting survey or analyzed a survey that they conducted back in May. And that is that fewer than half of US adults, 41%, believe businesses should take a public stance on current events. That's down from 48% in 2022. And so you know, I, I, I think of things that have gone on with like Target and uh, Anheuser-Busch with Bud Light uh, and the pushback that's happened. And, you know, one of the things I have suggested in the program is, is that businesses really need to carefully evaluate whether they want to wade into issues that are divisive, not just for their consumers, but divisive for their employees. And remember that organizations are made up of all kinds of different people from all kinds of different backgrounds. And you know, most people probably aren't sitting around saying, I wonder where X company stands on the issue of this political or social issue. Most people aren't sit sitting around wondering that. But when the companies wade into those issues, for better or for worse, uh, they're taking a risk. And I think this new survey by Gallup really demonstrates that. Now, it is interesting that po political party identification has the strongest influence on whether Americans believe corporations should take a public stance. Most Democrats, 62%, according to the survey, believe businesses should take a public stance on current events. That's compared with just 17% of Republicans and 36% of independents. Interestingly, while still high, the percentage of Democrats, well, while still high, the percentage of Democrats who believe businesses should take a stance has declined from 75% in 2022. So I think the numbers do show a, a shifting attitude on this. Thank you once again for tuning in to This Week at Work. If you enjoy the show, please share it with your colleagues. Forward our invites. Share the link aimea.org forward slash This Week at Work or follow or subscribe wherever you get your news and entertainment like LinkedIn, YouTube, 
Spotify, Apple Podcasts, we're everywhere you are. And you can be part of the show. Send your questions and comments 